Attention, we are live in three, two, one. Good afternoon. I now call the meeting of the Code Enforcement Special Magistrate to order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the States of America, the Republic for which it stands, a nation under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the Hillsborough County Code Enforcement Special Magistrate hearing. When addressing the magistrate, please state your name, address, and speak clearly into the microphone. If you are planning to speak during this hearing, you must sign the speaker's list located at the front door so your case may be called. Any person who decides to appeal a decision of the Code Enforcement Special Magistrate will need a record of the proceedings. The record is comprised of the testimony and evidence upon which an appeal is based. It is your responsibility to ensure a verbatim record of the proceedings is made. By law, you have 30 days from the date of my order to appeal my decision to circuit court. Presentations by the county, respondents, and opposition must be kept to a maximum of 10 minutes each. The special magistrate may recess at 12.30 and reconvene at 1.30, which is not true because we are in the afternoon today, to conclude its business if needed. The basic process for this hearing is as follows. Ms. Meyer will conduct the oath of witness. Your case will be announced. Staff will present their evidence on your case, and then you'll be allowed to rebut that evidence and explain what has occurred. We'll close the hearing and announce a decision. I may ask questions allow other witness testimony as necessary. Depending on my order, county staff may later have to conduct an inspection to see if you have complied. If the staff believes you have not complied, you will receive a notice in the mail. By law, you have 10 days to contest that notice. Otherwise, it will be considered correct and a lien may be filed against your property. For false alarm or water resources cases, if you have not complied by paying the past due burglar false alarm fine or water resources penalty fine within the time ordered, you will receive a notice in the mail. By law, you have 10 days to contest that notice. Otherwise, it will be considered correct and a lien may be filed against your property. If you have any questions, these rules are outlined by Hillsborough County Codes, Ordinances, and Laws, Chapter 14, Article 2, Section 14. Before we begin, please silence all electronic devices. Ms. Meyer, please. All county staff who will be testifying must take the oath of witness. Please stand and raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. First case is on page five under fire marshal cases. Number 10, case number FM21009. The owner is Martha Goana, and the violator is Casa de Dios LM Church. Location 13308 County Road 672. We have service, and some citizens are here for this case. If you're here for this case, come up to the podium. Okay, um, both of you raise your right hand to take the oath, please. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. And I need both of you to state your name and address. My name is Marta Gaona. Uh, my address is 13308 County Road, 672, Riverview, Florida, 33579. Thank you. Okay. My name is Raquel Gomez. My address is 5311 Bell Street, Limama, Florida, 33598. Thank you. I'm translating for Mark. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You can sit down. Now it is. There we go. You can sit down. You You're welcome to sit if you'd like. Oh, okay. All right. My name is uh, Jimmy Wiggum, uh, Inspector Jimmy Wiggum, uh, 9450 East Columbus Drive in the Hillsborough County Fire Marshal's Office that I work for. Okay, Inspector, go okay. ahead. Okay, this is a uh, inspe inspection that was conducted to, back in uh, October 24, 2018. We originally got it as a complaint, so I went out and uh, conducted the inspection. And so from that point, we've been out several times uh, for re-inspection, but the violation had been corrected. And my original violation was uh, building without permits, a building constructed, no permits, no plans. 
Right, and that's what it was. So I spoke with the pastor and also uh, Mar Martha. And uh, again, that was uh, that was the August, and I'm sorry, October. 102418 was the date of my first inspection. And we looked at that, that as unpermitted work, and you got to go through the process of putting a plan and also having a permit. And uh, I returned, my first reinspection was uh, January 24, 2019, and the same violation was outstanding. They had not corrected as yet. And so, and it kind of went through the same thing. I went out as a, on a second reinspection, was 32919. And as you can see, it kind of progressed, and, and uh, nothing had taken effect at the, up to that time. And my third reinspection was actually July 30th, 2018. And the following violation was still there. In other words, the unpermitted work. So I know that they've been working toward getting things done, but it just haven't worked out so far. And that's where we are today. And is this renovation? Is this new construction? What is the unpermitted work that? It's um uh, it's it's uh it's new construction basically. If I'm not mistaken, I think it was original a barn that was reconstructed into a church. If you can look at the pictures, it's actually a church which sit off the road is sitting behind a house. Okay. So we view it as new construction. Understand. Okay. And this has been going on since 2018? Yeah. Uh, yeah, October 18th. And is there a life safety issue? Yeah, from the perspective of uh, the church itself, they I went in and looked at everything. I looked at some of the uh, minor violations, which actually they were, there was really no, they had fire extinguishers, they had the exits, everything was there. So the main violation, again, is just the idea that it was built without going through the permitting process. Okay. So, yes, sir. I understand. All right, ladies, good afternoon. What would you like to tell me? Okay, um, I'm going to give you some papers here. Okay. Um, do you have a set that you're going to leave with me or yeah, do you need? Okay. okay, no problem. Once I take them, I have to keep them. So the young ladies over here, I'll take them for you. And we have been working with a general contractor. Um, Luis Alonso and Associates, LLC. Um, the um, architect was done with the um, the blueprints and, and uh, the construction has been approved, but it was just um, in a point right now where it's, um, it has been moved to the general contractor to clear. However, the um, general contractor died in July, and we're not getting any answers. Uh, right now, we're working with the wife, which she's also the owner, and she's trying to help us out on on getting the uh, everything ended. So right now, we we are um, trying to pay the uh, on on this paper right here. We're trying to pay the right of way permit fee and the certificate of capacity fee. And we have been trying to get with the county, uh, Kelly Mendoza, but I have not received any uh, callbacks. I've been trying for the last month to get in touch with her because we don't know how to pay this, these fees. Yeah, I see a notice of approval for a construction review mm -hmm. for May of 2021. So. Explain to me the timeline. You, was this building constructed in 2018 and then you just didn't have, you didn't do it with permits. So you're going back to get permits to make we, this. We were, yeah, we were dealing with a contractor and he never did anything. And when the inspector was going uh, to see the church, we kept um, telling him, you know, we're working with a uh, constructor and the name was Stone Hatch Construction. They uh, did not do anything. Uh, to get the permits or anything. Well, he, they, he did the first part, but didn't move forward to the other parts. So uh, we went and hired the second one, Luis Alonso and Associates. Okay. And they have been working with the architect to get everything in place. And as you can see on the letter where he says um, to Mr. Wickham, I apologize for the long time it has taken. We have obtained plan approval for the last three issues that were missing on this project. The GC is clear to move forward with the necessary construction. 
and um, we got in touch with the GC and that's when she told us that her husband has had passed away back in July and that he, she, she's trying to get everything clear for us because right now she doesn't know where her husband left the work. So, um, so it's currently not complete. No, and, but we are trying to get understand to get it all processed. Okay. So you had a contractor, mm -hmm. they didn't do what you needed them to do. Mm -hmm. Now you have another contractor who seems to have their act together. So the first contractor is definitely not going to get a good Yelp review. So, mm -hmm. okay. Can, can I make a co comment, sir? Sure. Okay. Absolutely. This, you uh, asked the question that what this would be. It would be a after the fact permit. Okay. Right. That's what that would end up being and, and everything. That's why I was always sharing with them. We need to see the approved plan because the way the church is sitting way back off the, off the main road, we need to see from an access standpoint of view, will our engines be able to get back there, fight fire and so forth and so on. So none of this had been verified just yet because we have no approved plans just yet. Okay. But doesn't as part of the approval process and the checklist that she has, doesn't it go through a fire review? Yes, it would. Okay. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. But yes. you're saying that has not taken place yet? Okay. And are you currently using the facility? Yes. Oh, wow. Okay. We're, uh, uh, we had um, a case before. Uh, it was a, the first case uh, where they had um, a complaint and um, we were told by the uh, magistrate Register. I don't know how to pronounce it, but uh, he said that uh, he approved for us to use the building. Okay. So, do you have an anticipated timeline for which you think you'll be complete, or has your contractor said what his plan is? What well, right now, uh, she's going to the county also to see what what is needed for us to complete. Um, the, the the latest was the email where they say we needed to pay their right away. Permit fee. Yes, I see. There's fees and the certificate of capacity fee. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've been calling Kelly Mendoza to pay it, but I have not received an answer. I don't know how to pay it. Okay. I don't know where to go to pay it. Actually, from from a fire marshal standpoint, are you okay with them occupying and using the building at this time, or do you want them to stop using the building until such time that it's been approved? From a, uh oh, okay. Now we're getting, now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> Good afternoon. Oh, thank you. Good afternoon. Tammy Zerla, Fire Marshal, uh, 9450 East Columbus Drive. So going to back, going back to what Inspector Wiggum said, it sounds like there's minor issues inside, nothing too major inside. However, our biggest concern, because this, we don't know right now if it's been through site, if it's been through any of that, mm -hmm. if, um, if there's, is there an on-site water issue out there or no, or. There could be an on-site water issue for firefighting. Sure. Um, there could also be an access issue because this is built, like he said, he had, you know, he had to really look to find this because it's behind, I believe, the property owner's home. Mm -hmm. So an issue would be if they had to fight a fire there, them getting back there. Those are those are our two concerns. Okay. What from a what your recommendation then here would be to discontinue use of the facility and come back in 30 days and tell us where we are from a permitting standpoint or what what do you feel comfortable with life safety is my biggest concern obviously here correct we would consider uh them when they use the building if they use it like say one on a sunday one one day a week okay um if they were to hire a fire watch um, they could do that through us. They could do that through a private company. We could give them a list of companies that we've, we have vetted along with the city of Tampa. We use the same list. Um, we would feel comfortable with that because then we would have a set of eyes that can be watching that if they see something, they get them out. And that's our main concern is getting them out. The, the building is second to okay. their lives, obviously. Uh, absolutely. Okay. Ladies, do you understand what we're talking about here in regards to use of the facility? So. It hasn't been hasn't completely gone through the planning process, so they don't have to. They haven't been able to sign off to say that yes, this is and everything is here and it's it's it works from a life safety standpoint. So, what they're ask asking and I, I tend to agree would be that you have to do some sort of fire watch. If you're only, are you only using it one day a week now 
only on Sundays? Yeah. Okay, so the, the fire marshals can give you some information on who you can contact, and I'll make that part of my ruling that um, you have to have a fire watch there, and, and then that way it'll allow you to continue to use it one day a week while we get through this process, and then if it doesn't come through and been, it is, is approved, then they'll come back and, and we'll go through it and again at a different level. Does that make sense? Yes. Fair? Fair. Okay, yeah. fantastic. Great. Thank you. Awesome. I rule in case FM21009, that basically in this present, I find the property is in violation of Hillsborough County codes or ordinances listed in staff's presentation. Further, based on the grad violation, the action taken by the violator and the violator's history require the landowner to um, hire a fire watch uh, for one day, uh, for use, use uh, one day a week on Sundays only um, until such time that the um, permits have been properly reviewed and approved and all fees have been paid uh, so that the contractor can then finish the work. And instead of doing days to come into compliance and a fine, I'll just have you come back and revisit this in 60 days. So you'll come back here in 60 days. You will tell us what your progress has been. And we'll take a look. We'll make sure the fire marshal has seen your part, your plans and they've been approved and your, fi your fines, your fees have been paid. And then we can move forward from that point and we'll just take it piece by piece instead of doing a fine. I think that's a better way to go. Okay. The, Clarification. Uh, do you want a continuance? Is that what you're? Yes, I want a continuance with the contingency that they right. must have a fire watch. I can do that. We've got some day dates. Week. We've got October 8th, which is a little soon. So 60 days will be November the 2nd. That'll give you some time to get done what you need we to get done. Also got one in December that's not on this list. Okay. So, oh, oh, well, we're almost in October. Do you have a December date? Uh, the 10th. Okay. Let's do December the 10th. So we'll reschedule, we'll continue till December the 10th with the contingencies that I mentioned before for the fire watch one day a week, complete your, your process with your new contractor, getting your plans approved and the fees paid, and then come back and talk to us in December. Okay, and another question. Do you know where I can pay these fees? I mean, the fees will be through the building, the building permit fees. They're on the, on the form that you submitted with the checklist. So you have to go through the, through the department to have that, to get that done. It'll okay. be through development services. Okay. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next case, please. Turn to page four under landscaping and natural resource cases. Number eight, case number L206036. The owner is Amelia Torres Rivera. And the violator is Ray and Sons Lawn Care, LLC. Location 10624 Hatteras Drive. We have service on both parties and someone is present. Go to the Just microphone, honey. Hi, my name is Amelia. Just a minute. Raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I Say swear. yes. I swear, yes. <laughs> And then um, just want to let you voice. know that I have a little difficulty hearing. I do have hearing aids, but the acoustic is a little, I and understand. everything is bouncing. So bear with me. <laughs> okay, I understand. Did you did you give your name and address? Say it again. Your uh, name and address. Amelia Torres Rivera, one zero six two four Hatteras Drive, Tampa, Florida three three six one five. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. They're going to give their case first and then I'll come back to you. Oh, okay. Okay. So you just sit down now? No, you can stay right okay. there. Okay. Hello, Wayne Doyan, Hillsborough County Natural Resources, Environmental Code Officer. This is case L206036. Owner Amelia Torres Rivera, the violator, Ray and Sons Lawn Care LLC. Violation address is 10624 Hatteras Drive, Tampa. Violation observed, unpermitted removal of two live oak trees measuring 18 and 21 inches DBH. Ordinance violated section 4.01.03.A, first inspection, May 6, 2020. First notice, May 8, 2020. Last inspection, September 15, 2021. Inspections conducted five. 
Uh, the work that was done was done by, we got the complaint from the neighbor, which during the taking down of these two trees by the long uh, tree company, it hit their property. Uh, that's how I got the complaint. When I arrived on scene, I met with the daughter. Uh, she allowed me access to take a look at the trees. Uh, this photo taken September 2nd, 2021, I didn't have access to the backyard. And then this is the last, she has replanted a Southern Magnolia tree, uh, which we gave double credit for and lessen the violation. Uh, staff recommendation for this case is submit a compliant tree restoration and or contribution agreement for 37 inches of trees and complete the restoration agreement within 60 calendar days. The violator Ray and Sons Lawn Care LLC is responsible for resolving this matter with the county. The property owner shall be removed from the violation. Fines will be issued for failure to meet time frames. Okay, and just to clarify, we're removing the owner because of her cooperation to this point and planting the tree. Is that? Yeah, she uh, meets the liniment, uh, minimum landscaping requirements. Okay. And the lawn company was not truthful on what was needed for this case. I see. That's not good. And we've had no contact with them other than good service. Oh, okay. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. All right, ma'am. What would you like to add? Anything you'd like to add? I greatly appreciate everybody. Um, I think I did everything within my power to make sure that this situation was resolved in the best possible way. Um, I always maintained the communication either with Wayne or uh, Ms. Krista Hall and responded quickly. Uh, to all their requests, and I, the situation brought me a lot of trouble, a lot, and they have not been responsible at all. They haven't even responded, they didn't show up. Um, I truly believe that this is the fair thing, you know, I think, um, and I do appreciate it, you know. I will receive this in writing, the results. Um, how long would it be before I received them? Uh, that's a great question. That comes down to paperwork, and luckily they don't make me in charge of paperwork. So, okay. but you'll get a you'll get a, yeah. a notice of what what I rule. Okay, I do appreciate regards. that. Just to um, make, um, let it be known that because of the situation that happened with the neighbor, there is something uh, legally in court. So yes, I. I this would be a big situation. Understand. So well, I, I'm I'm sorry to hear that you have to continue to to fight this, and I appreciate you being incredibly responsive. And thank you. I, I think we've got a, a great recommendation from the team here, and I appreciate thank all the you. work that you've done to this point. And thanks for coming down and telling. Thank you for coming for here. Coming and oh, absolutely. It yes. I'm I'm very very pleased with this outcome. Excellent. Excellent. Well, I will go ahead and make my ruling. Thank you. Absolutely. I rule in case L206036 that based on the evidence presented, I find the property is in violation of Hillsborough County codes or ordinances as listed in staff's presentation. Further, based on the gravity of the violation, the action taken by the violator and the violator's history concur with staff's recommendations and order the violator, Ray Sons Lawn Care LLC, to submit a compliant tree restoration and or contribution agreement for 37 inches of trees and complete the restoration agreement within 60 calendar days. The violator Ray and Sons Lawn Care LLC is responsible for resolving this matter solely with the county. The property owner shall be removed from the violation. Failure to meet any of the timelines mentioned above will result in a fine of $150 per day. Next case, please. I don't believe we have any other citizens signed in to speak. So okay. we'll just go through what's left of the agenda. Terrific. From the top. If, if you don't mind, I'll go ahead and finish up the L, which is just one more case. From the bottom. Just for the record, page four, number nine, L206274. This case has been rescheduled to the October 8, 2021 hearing.
you let me go back to the first. Please. Okay. The next case is on page one under water ordinance cases. Number one, case number WR2100257. The owner is Lakeside Community Owners Association Incorporated. The location is Sims Road at Sims Lake Drive. We have service and no one is present. Case number one was pulled. Good afternoon. I'm Carmine Posada with Code Enforcement. This is case WR2100257 on Wednesday, 31021 at 711 in the AM. Officer Ted Baker arrived at Sims Road and Sims Lake Drive. This is the Lakeside Community Homeowners Association property uh, to find the sprinkler system watering along the common area near the pond. This is a non-watering day during non-watering hours. Notice of violation was sent on 3-11-2021. Default notice followed up on 4-13-2021. Notice of hearing on 9-7-2021. Officer Baker posted the notice of the hearing. Uh, this is a second uh, time addressed at this property and the fine is $100. I rule in case WR2100257. The base of the evidence presented the violator has failed to pay the water resources penalty fine for illegal sprinkling imposed by section 111 7, Hillsborough County Codes of Ordinances and Laws, Part B, Public Utilities. I grant the violator 30 days to pay the fine imposed in order if payments not made by that date, a fine of $25 per day be assessed. Number two, WR2100889. This case complied September 20, 2021. Number three, WR2101052. This case complied September 13, 2021. Page two, number four, WR2101103. This case has to be pulled for, for lack of service and will be rescheduled. Number five, WR2101192, the owner is Jessica Marie Galarza, location 11855 Myrtle Rock Drive. We have service and no one is present. Hey, Carmine Pisano with Code Enforcement. This case is WR2101192 on Friday, 5-7-2021 at 5-17. AM Officer Ted Baker arrived at 11855 Myrtle Rock Drive to find the sprinkler system watering the area on the right side of the driveway. This is a non watering day during non watering hours. Notice of violation was sent on 513 2021. The fall letter sent on 7, I'm sorry, sent 614 2021. Notice of hearing was posted by Officer Ted Baker on 9 7 2021. He delivered the notice to the hearing notice of the hearing to the property owner and the fine is one hundred dollars. First violation. Second, second event, first violation was a warning. I rule in case WR two one zero one 
192, the base of the evidence presented the violator has failed to pay the water resources penalty fine for legal sprinkling imposed by section 111-7 Hillsborough County Codes of Ordinances and Laws, Part B, Public Utilities. Grant the violator 30 days to pay the water penalty fine imposed. Order of payment is not made by that date. A fine of $20 per day be assessed. Number six, WR2101212. The owner is John LeBlack. Location 706 Kingswood Place. We have service and no one is present. Carmine Pisano at Hillsborough County Code Enforcement. This is the case WR2101212. On Thursday, 5 13, 2021, at 10 40 hours a.m., Officer Eric Tyne arrived at 706 Kingswood Place to find watering to the front yard area. This is a non watering day during non watering hours. Notice of violation was sent on 5 17, 2021. Default was sent on 6 22, 21. And the notice of hearing was served on 9 8 2021 by Officer Ted Baker posting the property. It's the second event. First is a warning. This is a $100 fine. Everyone in case WR2101212, that based on the evidence presented, the violators failed to pay the water resources penalty fine for illegal sprinkling imposed by Section 111 7 Hillsborough County Codes of Ordinances and Laws, Part B Public Utilities. And grant the violator 30 days to pay the water penalty fine imposed. Order of payment is not made by that date. A fine of $20 per day be assessed. Page three, number seven, WR2101301. The owner is Robert P. LaDuc. Location 10232 Newminster Loop. We have service and no one is present. Carmine Pisano with code enforcement. This is case WR2101301. On Friday, 5 14, 2021, at 4 49 a.m., Officer Ted Baker arrived at 10232 Newminster Loop to find the sprinkler system watering on the right front side of the driveway. This is a non watering day during non watering hours. Notice of violation was sent on 5 19, 2021. The fault was sent on 6 21, 2021. Officer Ted Baker on 9-8-2021 posted the property for the notice of a hearing. This is the second event at the property. It's a $100 fine. Everyone case WR2101301, the base of the image presented, the violator has failed to pay the water resources penalty fine for illegal sprinkling imposed by Section 111-7, Hillsborough County Codes of Ordinances and Laws, Part B Public Utilities. And grant the violator 30 days to pay the water penalty fine imposed. Or if payment's not made by that date, a fine of twenty dollars per day be assessed. That concludes the agenda. Ladies and gentlemen, we are adjourned. Thank you very much.